<laughs> okay, so we're gonna start that take again because uh, let's just say that went to a joke that is, uh, yeah, we'll just leave it at that. So anyways, we're here with Luke from Luke's Lab at Rapid TCT here in Detroit, and they always have something cool. So we got a bamboo over here. I guess we'll start with that, Luke. Sounds good. So. You know, this, this is really taking the world by storm. This here is actually my original Kickstarter bamboo, um, but it has, a, it has a couple of special things added to it. So in my hand here, we have our new hot end. We're calling this the Pika hot end, named after the mountain mouse of North America and Asia. And it has a couple, you know, cool little tricks to it. Uh, the, the main one that I like to talk about is that we have uh, a much longer melt zone, right? I'm the tube guy. We make long hot ends that melt lots of plastic and I wanted to bring the same experience to bamboo. So we created something that does exactly that. Instead of a tube, we use titanium wings to support the, the heat block. The heat block goes all the way up inside where there's a titanium heat break as well, pressed against the heat sink for cooling. And then at the top here, we actually have a fin nozzle. So this will be fully replaceable and we're even coming out with a tungsten carbide fin nozzle so everybody can print as much hard stuff as they want. So fin is, that's the uh, standard from Slice, correct? That is the new standard okay. from Slice. So it's the M5 thread. It has a seat for the boot that's all built into it. It's, it's, a, it's a great standard genuinely and I look forward to embracing it on future projects. Okay. More to come on that. So okay. in our testing here, we've actually been getting well over 40 millimeters cubic a second out of a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. So oh, wow. this is uh, 300 grams, give or take. It's, it's solid. Um, and that was printed in under three hours. So, I mean- That's it's, heavy, that's it, heavy. <laughs> I don't know how to display it on camera, but um, it, it is definitely heavy. And it fits inside of it, uses standard heaters and therms and all that kind of stuff. Yep. So you'll be able to swap it in and so no, drop in, wider. plug and play, 40 millimeters cubed a second. Easy, on a 0.4. On a again, 0.4. Like, we're not doing any nozzle trickery, and you can just swap it again, but it just is what it is. Awesome. Um, moving on over, we have a stable bot. That one's been parked right now, because time is a joke. <laughs> um, and then moving on over, we have the ever-expanding list of tube and tube upgrades going on. So some of the new stuff we have here, for those of you who like shiny rainbow things, we have our polished uh, and uh, anodized uh, titanium shield. So in our testing, we've saved about 15% of the wattage lost to cooling fans, so that's a nice little plus there. Um, and it just looks cool, honestly. Moving on down, we have our Giga head uh, as installed on Joel's uh, Joel's Giga there. Uh, oh, this, so for the or this is the upgrade for the Blue Storm, which is the upgrade of the Orange Storm. Correct, correct. So this is the, the tool head there. Um, we're going to be getting an upgraded kit that will be available in a major retailer for 3D printing very soon. Ooh. So that, this will be available plug and play kit with all the wiring include everything like that in a, in a much deeper purple. Um, going down the line, we have our Voron tool head. So that's take the takeoff, off, yep. which I'm currently in the progress of installing that on a machine. Exactly. Uh, so here it is just installed, just to kind of show you what it could look like. Um, on the tool head, we have our rat rig tool head example. So just a, a plate and it bolts right up and works pretty happily. Honestly, you can reuse everything there. And then um, just on the bench is our, our StableBot standard tool head with our uh, hug bracket, as my wife affectionately named it, um, <laughs> that allows for easier removal of the, of the hot end while still being perfectly good with conductions. So uh, last two things, moving down the line up here, we have our in industrial filament dryer. So this can go up to 90 degrees Celsius, holds a whack ton of filament. As you yeah, can see, that's two five it. kilo spools that it can print out of at the same time and then cool our, our one things. Is this a product you're, you have for sale or you're bringing that's it correct. to sale? That's correct, yep. So that's been on our website for a while now. Um, but this is uh, having a show special price for the next month of $3,000 for one okay. of these things. Uh, they're very popular when purchased with yeah, so uh, it's definitely a, a, a commercial industrial type market product, but yeah, exactly. when paired with this, it makes a bit of sense. Yeah, so this uh, this came to last for Rapid TCT. It's actually the same uh, the same equipment here. So this is the StableBot Pro. So right now it's just printing a vase mode print. Everybody loves vase mode prints. Um, this particular model is 600 by 600 by 1,000 millimeters tall. It uses basically all the technology that we're very fond of already, tube, beacon, LGX. Um, on the tool head is a functional Jupiter running at 48 volts, so we're doing good there. Um, but and it is IDEX, so there's yep. two different nozzles. It is IDEX, we're just printing in a vase mode because it, it goes fast and goes in a circle, yep. everybody loves that. Um, and this platform can go up to two meters in, in one direction. So, we, we so really if you need a big machine, custom built, see this guy. I love building them big. <laughs> so yeah, that's I, I think that's pretty much it. New coming here. So that's what's new with Luke. Awesome. Cheers. Thank you. There we go. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you.
So one of the most annoying parts of running a 3D printing print farm is managing a 3D printing print farm, taking prints off the bed, especially when prints finish at like three in the morning. So wouldn't it be, that be nice if you could automate it, Mikesh? Yeah, absolutely. And guess what? You have something that could do that. Yes, absolutely. So what do we got here? Um, so I'm Mikesh from Automated. Uh, what we have released here is an auto ejection system. Um, that's basically a DIY mechanism that um, you can build it yourself. Um, what it does is basically it knows when the print finishes, uh, the arm comes and grabs the print itself. There's a rack on the side which multiple slots on it. Um, it goes and puts it onto a rack where an empty position is. Once it's put that onto a rack, it goes and grabs the empty build plate and puts it onto your printer and sends the command to a printer that says, it's good to go, you can start a new print. And you can line up as many prints as you want. You can run it 24 seven if you really wanted to, as long as your rack kind of allows for that storage to work with, uh, for the print queue. So for that to work, for it to have to run automated, it has to know a few things. So it, it knows how tall a print is because we're looking at a rack here. Yeah. Obviously you don't want to put a print that's too tall in an that's area correct. where it's not going to fit. So it automatically yeah. knows. So that's one of the data that comes out of your G code that says what height your print is going to be. What it will do is it'll start from the bottom. So if you've got, let's say three uh, empty build prints at the bottom and you've got three open ones. So it'll say it's a 50 mil print, I'm gonna stack it here. But then it says next print is another 50 mil, but you've blocked out two slots because it can't go in that. So it'll know exactly that you need to block out that slot above and go one above that. Oh, so nice. it will know which slots are gonna be empty and how high the print is exactly stored. Okay. And also we're introducing a camera system in there. So that's an additional um, fail proof system that it will know that, hey, there's a print there, I can literally see it. So why put print over there? Okay. So that will come in handy when it's when you're storing and ejecting the build plates. Nice, and how is it, so this is a bamboo machine here you're demonstrating with, That's so correct. how is it communicate? Is it MQTT protocol basically? That's correct, so we have basically utilized the MQTT protocol that broadcasts the message that print has finished, and we're putting that into our script. Um, it then sends the script, that command to the auto eject, mark one, and then it comes and does the ejection. Uh, once it's done the ejection, stored the print, loaded the print bed, new print bed, it also broadcasts a message that, hey, I've done the ejection, now the Bamboo Lab comes in, does its next print. Oh, nice. Now, could you set it up to do like repeat prints or move on to the next print or like, because sometimes you want to run batches of the same part or like print one thing and print the next and it can do that as well? Yeah, so that's what we call the auto engine we come in with. That's okay. a smart kind of software configuration that allows you to use whatever slicer you want to use, but then you can queue it up smartly so that, hey, this particular print, I want 100 of these, just keep on printing it. And these are the two printers I want you to print it on. So it will know that, so it will allow you to do smart queue management um, that comes with it as a configurator. So yes, that's possible, that, that you can do that. Nice, and again, this is a bamboo you're demonstrating on, but this works with pretty much any firmware that is able to talk to something else. That's correct, else. so first I started with Voron Switchwire because it had a sling bed and open end. Yep. Once I got comfortable with that, I started with A1. Um, and then after that, I realized that we only have micro sensor here, which has got P1S printers. So I had to kind of hack my way to make it work with that. And we realized it was simple and straightforward. And that proved the point that is modular enough that within a week I could manage to run it on three different printers. Same yeah. mechanism. Yeah, because like the unit you have demonstrating here is obviously just doing the one machine, but theoretically you could build this as long as you need it, as tall as you need it, and service a whole rack of 3D printers. That's correct, that's correct. So that is our plan with um, the initial Kickstarter. They will give you a starting point, uh, but if you really want just for one printer, that's good. If you want a three printer and a two rack, that can also be possible. If you want a taller rack to go taller, yes, that's also possible. And where can people find more information on this? Right now, we have just released information as of yesterday on our website, which okay. says sign up for updates for Kickstarter. We're aiming to launch our Kickstarter in about three to four weeks um, and deliver in four months. We're going to partner with LDO Motors to okay. deliver those kit sets because I'm a big fan of their um, kit set, to be yep. honest. Um, it's a starting point, and we also will have an enterprise model release in that four months, which will have all machine parts, no 3D printed parts, nice rails, nice mechanism that as a business you can come in and say, hey, I just want a plug and play unit, give me that, I don't want to build my own machine. Yeah, because this could be useful for like, if somebody at home who just runs the odd print, but you you know, you know don't want to wake up at three in the morning, you can just kind of throw this on a single machine to take care. Yeah. But if you're running a print farm, a more dedicated professional solution will also be available. Yeah, I mean, that's good. As, even as a hobbyist, as I said, like if you're running a project, if you make your RC plane, it's going to take you four days to print because you need to manage between work and sleep and everything. Yep. This could potentially do it in two days. Yeah, because you don't have day. downtime. Downtime, downtime. when, downtime. The, That's when the machine ain't running, it ain't making money. Exactly. So, that is a really cool system.
So again, that's automated and cheers, Makesh. Thank you. Cheers. So I've been wandering around the show all day and one thing that I found is people don't like wet filament. And this gentleman right here really doesn't like wet filament. So here at Evos, they have some really cool stuff to keep your filament toasty dry. So what do we got here? Hey, here is Jordan from Ivos, and like first thing first, I want to show you this guy. This rotation of filament inside, and able to reach 70 degree. Uh, and also they have a different setting from the screen. As you can see that you, you can just switch to different material and they have a presetting inside. And also one more thing, I want to show you these gentlemen. This was really cool, I've seen this yesterday. Yeah, like, uh, we split, uh, like this is an upgrade kit for the AMS and it turns AMS into a filament dryer. Like so these we, are individually separated? Yeah, it is. And we split into four different zones, like which means for different material, you can have a different setting because we have a four screen on the, on the front and four heating elements on the back. And then looking at the back here, are these vents right here? These automatically yeah, open up? Yeah. Like, for example, when you open the screen or you turn the unit on, and you can see that the door is open automatically when it's running. And once the drying process is finished, then the door will automatically shut, out, uh, shut down so that it will keep the humidity level inside of the, uh, the, the, the unit once you finish your drying. Oh, nice. So it'll, it'll open up, dry your filament. Once your filament's dry, it'll seal it up. So you don't need to constantly be running that heater to keep yep. it dry. So it's yep. nice and sealed. That's the thing. Oh, nice. And this is an add-on for just a regular bamboo AMS, essentially. Yep. Okay, cool. And then we have the dryer over here. So this dryer, you said, uh, it rotates the filament to dry it evenly and prevent potentially, because some materials at certain temperatures can get a little soft, so you kind of want to rotate so they don't yep, motion like, or anything. Like yeah, like the rotation function is actually phased to the heat concentration at the bottom. You know, like most of the filament dryer, they have uh, connected to one single spot. And if you rotation the filament, it will more even yep. when drying. And this, can it take bigger than one kilogram spools? Yeah, like for this one, we can take three kg spools. Nice. And it goes up to 70 degrees, you said, correct? Yep. Okay, cool. And what is this guy here? What is this? This is a, a, a reason three in one unit that able to uh, clean, dry, and cure the reason parts after you print. Like, oh, it's a resin curing? Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's just like one, three in one, like, a, like your laundry machine. Okay, so you just put the, the resin, it comes out of the machine, you put it right in here, yep. it'll wash it and cure it all in one. Yep, just like that, boom. Like, like we have a setting at the, at the top panel about the time liquid level and like, like drying time and curing time. And it's just like you put it, your, your print part inside and click start and everything done. Nice. So it'll automatically fill up with ISO and then once it's done cleaning, it'll automatically drain it, yep. cure it and everything. Very yep. nice. That'll be handy because that's one of the, the worst parts of resin <laughs> is the post-processing. Definitely. It, it, like so that, that makes it a mess. little bit easier. Yep. Yep. This one is just like that easy. Nice. Very nice.